I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Uganda to introduce an address by the head of state. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President and colleagues, I have the distinct honor of introducing the address of His Excellency Yoel Kagutam Seven, President of the Republic of Uganda, to the general debate of the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly. Your Excellency, President of the UNI General Assembly, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, His Excellency, Secretary General of the United Nations, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, distinguished delegates. I congratulate you on your election as President of the 76th Session of the United Nations General Assembly, and I assure you of Uganda's unwavering support. I commend H.E. Mr. Volkan Boskir for his transformational leadership of the 75th session, especially during such challenging times like COVID-19 pandemic. I would like also to congratulate the Secretary General, His Excellency Antonio Guterres, upon his reappointment for the second term, and thank him for his devotion to the work of the United Nations. Your re-election is a demonstration of the confidence the member states have in your leadership. I commiserate with all countries on, on the enormous lives lost due to COVID-19 pandemic. Uganda welcomed the theme of the 76th session of the General Assembly. The United Nations is the appropriate forum to speak with a common voice on sustainable, resilient, and inclusive recovery from the devastating impact of Corona COVID-19. Uganda, like other countries, has had to respond to the unprecedented and multifaceted effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uganda's approach has been to prioritize the protection of human life, to ensure sustainable, resilient, and inclusive recovery. And the government has taken deliberate and targeted decisions to continue strengthening the capacity of the national health system and other key sectors of the economy to respond to the impacts of COVID-19 pandemic adequately. Therefore, we call for more action to ensure that at the center of, a global, of the global, of a global recovery, equitable and affordable access for all to save quality and efficacious, uh, effective, accessible, and affordable COVID-19 vaccines, the, also the therapeutics and diagnostics. We commend the Secretary General's efforts for his continued advocacy and active engagement on equitable access uh, to vaccines. And, and, and these vaccines should include uh, uh, working together to, uh, to, to manufacture the vaccines in, 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 in many countries, including Uganda. We are developing our own vaccines. On the other side, we find that the actions by some to hold vaccines at the expense of poor countries, also referred to as vaccine nationalism, is wrong. But a good lesson for developing countries that, that don't want to innovate. Uganda reaffirms her commitment to implementing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development in its entirety and to achieving 17, the 17 Sustainable development goals as we commence the decade of action and the delivery of sustainable development. The COVID-19 reinforces the, the pre-existing obstacles to realizing the, the goals, structural inequalities, gaps, systematic challenges and risks. We firmly believe that the successful implementation of our third national development plan will help us 
to achieve all these 17 SDGs. As Uganda advances the implementation of its plans, it is committed to ensuring no one is left behind. The government has put in place laws and policies to support the inclusion of vulnerable persons. The COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted Uganda's progress in some sectors, but has also given impetus to the country's industrialization drive. The toll that the pandemic has had on jobs, hitherto promising sectors could significantly impact efforts to reduce poverty, vulnerability, and inequality. However, it has awakened the discourse on how Uganda builds its systems to generate the required resilience to withstand such shocks. Some of the sectors have continued to do well, like agriculture and manufacturing, but services uh, have suffered. As government first tracks progress on the 23rd agenda, it has embraced the global wave of uh, digital transformation, which presents significant opportunities. Recently, Uganda experienced impacts of intensive and prolonged loss and, 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 and uh, low rainfall, severely impacting lives and live, livelihoods. We had two extremes. On the one hand, we had some drought, and then we also had uh, too much rain uh, in, in other months. We share Lake Victoria, the second largest freshwater lake in the world, with the brother countries of Kenya and Tanzania. The lake's water level in Uganda is measured at a place uh, in the city of Jinja, and the lowest level of water ever recorded was in 1923, when it was 10.28 meters. Before that, the highest, the highest level recorded had been on January 1st, 1918. The record had shown 11.89 meters. And the subsequent high level record was on May 16th, 1964, when the water level reached 13.41 meters. However, since last year, the water level in the lake has been going up. On May 19, 2020, the water level reached the new record level of 13.49 meters. Since that time, the water level has remained above 13 meters. Therefore, we have asked the people who settled too close to the lake shores move away from the lake shores. Staying 200 meters from the lake shore is wise, correct, and useful thing to do. Uganda, despite being a less contributor to climate change, is taking deliberate and targeted actions to address climate change through investments in the climate adaptation and mitigation measures, such as increasing access and consumption of clean energy to enhance production, and increasing forest and wetland cover, among others, in line with our ambitious, nationally determined contributions. As we concluded the UN decade on, on biodiversity, 2011-2020, the assessment of the progress towards the global biodiversity targets indicated insufficient results Uganda, just like most countries, continues to experience biodiversity loss to the extent that some wildlife and other living species are now in danger of extinction. Cognizant of this urgency, Uganda, will support, with the support of the international community, has taken specific world action measures that include inter-area mainstreaming of biodiversity conservation and restoration in our national development policies and priorities as highlighted in our national development plan and the vision 2040, restoration of 64,000 hectares of degraded wetlands to benefit 4 million farmers with the target of regaining our 1994 of 15.6% wetland coverage by 2030. Reforestation and the afforestation of over 200,000 hectares, and we have prioritized more trees, tree planting to ensure that Uganda's forest cover increases from 20.4% in 2015 to 24% by 2030. 
strengthening the public private sector and non, and non state actors' engagement, demarcation of boundaries of critical wetlands and central forest reserves, prevent encroachment, strengthening the legal institutional framework to address the challenge of illegal wildlife trade and, and poaching, such as repealing the Wildlife Act Chapter. Wildlife Act Chapter 200 in 2019 with the Uganda Wildlife Act 2019 that provides for the conservation and sustainable management of wildlife and enforcement of fishing regulations to address the challenge of illegal and unregulated fishing. Uganda has acted decisively to fulfill the commitment made during the celebration of the 70th anniversary of the United Nations in September 2015 to protect the, the planet from degradation. The countries in the Global South have continued to stand in solidarity with their global counterparts even during the COVID-19 pandemic by offering appropriate support to enable them adequately respond to the pandemic. Their actions are in line with the principles of South-South cooperation and support of the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. In this regard, Uganda will continue to strengthen South-South and triangular cooperation within the United Nations. As the third South-South Summit host, I reiterate Uganda's commitment to host the summit and look forward to welcoming my fellow G77 plus China leaders to, to Kampala, Uganda on sustainable dates in 20. 2022-2023. The predicament of countries in special situations, particularly the least developed countries, continues to date. The evidence from the Istanbul Program of Action and for, for LODCs uh, implementation of our assessment indicates insufficient progress towards achieving its overarching goal of half of the LODCs graduating by 2020. Uganda, like other least developed countries, has continued to face continuous challenges uh, during the implementation that include, among other things, limited productive capacity, limited funding, insufficient physical infrastructure, commodity price vol volatility, climate change, biodiversity loss, and disasters. Notwithstanding the structural constraints to, to to development faced by LDCs, Uganda has, re has uh, registered progress in implementing the Istanbul Program of Action. In particular, national paved road network increased, accessibility to electricity and innovations as well as the use of mobile technology for financial transactions increased. In addition, primary school enrollment, including gender parity in primary education, increased maternal and infant mortality rates decreased, and prevalence and incidence, of, of incidence rates of HIV reduced. We continue to face serious challenges to peace and security in our region. Uganda continues to support and advance peace and security efforts in the region. We remain actively involved in the regional initiatives, such as those of the OAU, IGAD, ESC, ICGLR and are encouraged by the progress that we continue to, to make. This assembly made a historic pledge during the World Summit in 2005, a commitment to strengthen the United Nations with a view to enhancing its authority and, and efficiency. This cannot happen without the reform of the United Nations Security Council. The need to reform the UN Security Council is now more urgent and imperative than ever before. Uganda supports the comprehensive reform of the UN Security Council. The present geopolitical realities are compelling for a comprehensive reform of the, of the UN Security Council to make a way for equitable representation. All countries are duty bound to promote and protect human rights under international law and the United Nations Charter. Therefore, we must continue to address the promotion and protection of human rights without politicizing the issue of human rights. 
Uganda remains committed to fulfilling its human rights obligation, obligations in accordance with its constitution and international law. Our commitment is, is from the firm belief that it, is, that it is suitable for our people, drawn from the bad experience and lessons from the history of dictatorship in Uganda. In this context, Uganda will be voluntarily reviewed during the 40th session of the Universal Periodic Review at the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva, scheduled from January to February 2022. The predicament of refugees continues to this day. Uganda has maintained its open door policy on refugees, and currently the country hosts over 1.4 million refugees, the largest number in Africa. It is in line with the spirit that recently we took another deliberate step to assist those in distress from Afghanistan. Our approach to refugees is anchored in our belief that no one chooses to flee their country or to be a refugee, and if they do, they must be treated with dignity and kindness in their times of need. However, the circumstances of the refugees and host communities pose enormous challenges for the national authorities which need to be addressed as part of the international solidarity. We therefore continue to call for more equitable sharing of the burden and responsibility for hosting and supporting the world's refugees consistent with international commitments. I thank you for your attention. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Republic of Uganda for the statement just made. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Azerbaijan to introduce an address by the Head of State. 